What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Vegas 98. We are back in the Apex for a fun card today on Saturday. And yeah, a ton of spots really sticking out for this card. So yeah, looking forward to breaking it all down before we do so. If you guys could like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. All three of those things go a very long way. Be on the lookout for the best bet live stream going live at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, going live uh, one hour before these prelims kick off. But yeah, going to get into these fights here. And yeah, this bout orders completely wrong um they changed the bout order on me like three times this week just back and forth back and forth so we'll go with what we got here all right so we'll start with uh junior Tafa sean sheriff nothing here um this fight's disgusting i mean Tafa's minus 350 the under one and a half is minus 305 Tafa round one ko is is a minus number i'm just i'm just not touching anything here honestly if anything it's probably a dog or pass just because it is a very low level heavyweight fight these guys are going to stand and bang if it does turn out sean sheriff can go out there and wrestle he probably wins it's just a fight i want nothing to do with so i think tafa probably wins this fight by first round knockout but I just don't really see any any way of getting onto this from a betting perspective next we got julia palastri going against Corey mckenna um, yeah, for me, I, I like Palastri, but you know, I think this fight's going to decision at a very high clip. I think the fight goes to decision is minus 350. So at that point, it probably is going to come down to the crooked, corrupt, blind judges. And yeah, it's probably a split decision type fight. You know, the, do the judges uh, favor the control of McKenna or do the judges favor the, the better striking, the more powerful shots of Palastri? I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a crooked, corrupt judge, so I'm not sure what they're thinking. Um, but yeah, I think Palastri wins the fight, but I could see McKenna getting a takedown, you know, racking up some control, you know, something like that. But yeah, it should be a close fight. Palastri, I think, wins, but laying minus 135, I'm not too sure about that. Next, we got Cody Haddon going against Dan Argetta. Yeah, so Dan Argetta did miss weight. He did not look the best on the scale, to be honest, and I don't like that from Dan Argetta. I was looking at actually taking a shot on the Dan Argetta money line. I feel like the path for Dan Argetta would be to wrestle nonstop. This guy's wrestling um, like crazy in there, landing almost five takedowns for 15 minutes. But if he did have a bad weight cut, if he's coming in here with maybe an injury or something going on with him, you know, I, I don't, I don't like that. So after seeing Argetta on the scales, I'm completely passing on the Argetta side. Um, but there is a prop that did stick out, and it's that Haddon by submission prop. I mean, Dan Argetta um, just lost by submission in his last fight. If he is coming in here, you know, with a, a tough cut, um, I think that Haddon sub could be very, very live as the fight goes on. I, I don't think it's early, though. I think it's going to be later in the fight, uh, round two, round three. And I was looking at these round two, round three sub props, and they were astronomical prices. So I took a quarter unit shot on each for Cody Haddon, round two sub. Uh, round two is plus 3,100, and round three is plus 3,300. This guy's a black belt in BJJ, and Dan Argetta is going to be wrestling the entire time. Could also be a club and sub, because on the feet, it's not even close in favor of Haddon. So, yeah, after the weigh-ins, I'm, I'm completely staying away from Argetta. I did not like seeing that. But, yeah, Haddon sub 2-3 are, are massive numbers if you want to take a shot on him. Uh, Jonathan Pierce, Pat Sabatini. Um... I think this is my my favorite bet of the card. It's, it's the fight doesn't go to decision. I have two units on it at plus 115. I think somebody's getting served here. I think Jonathan Pierce could very easily get submitted in this match if he's been submitted three times. And not only that, he's been put in like... I think almost like 10 submission attempts against him in the UFC. He puts himself in the bad spots all the time. We saw him get subbed by Pritu. We saw him get put into multiple bad spots against Christian Rodriguez. We saw him get put into a submission attempt against Kai Kamaka. Um, so on and so forth. Pretty much every single fight, he gets put into a bad spot. Um, on the ground, and he's going against Pat Sabatini, who's a very high-level BJJ black belt, and I think Sabatini, his path is literally a submission. He's not knocking out Jonathan Pierce. It's not happening. Maybe Sabatini could win a decision via the control, but even that, I'm not too sure of. I think if Sabatini is winning this fight, it is by submission, and they have Pat Sabatini by submission at plus 650. Uh, which is just crazy to me. I think Pat Sabatini by sub is very live. And I also think Jonathan Pierce by knockout, it's very live. Pat Sabatini has been knocked out three times. He's been dropped multiple times in the UFC. So yeah, I like that fight doesn't go to decision at plus money. I'm on it for two units at plus 115. And on top of that, I, I did sprinkle the, the Pat Sabatini by submission for a half a unit at plus 650. I think that's literally his money line. The price doesn't make sense. And then as always, if you want to go with the Pierce 2-3 props, those make sense as well. Those are things that I typically do play. But I also could see Pierce knocking out Sabatini in the, in the first round, which is why I kind of stayed away from those. So I'm pretty heavily invested in some violence here. I think it's either Pierce by knockout or Sabatini by sub, and I'm hoping one of those spots come through. Next, we got Ramazan Temurov going against CJ Vergara. Very weird fight here for me. Um, you know, I like 
Temurov to win, but minus 350 to minus 400, I think is a, a bit much on somebody making their UFC debut. I'm not the highest on Cedric Vergara, but the guy is tough. The guy does have good cardio. He has fought the better competition, but you look at Temurov and, you know, this these props just don't make sense to me. So Temurov is heavily, heavily favored to win this fight. And how does Temurov win fights? It's it's by knockout, and it's by knockout in the first round. This guy has like six or seven first-round knockouts. I think he has four in a row. Um, and he goes for it. He absolutely goes for it in the strike, and he looks to take his opponent's head off. And C.J. Vergara is going C.J. Vergara is going to oblige him in that type of fight. Vergara is going to come forward. He's going to put himself into the fire. And although we haven't seen Vergara knocked out before, we have seen him hurt multiple times, especially in that uh, Daniel Lacerda fight. So, yeah, I mean, Temurov, the KO props are, are kind of what I'm looking at here. If he's going to pay off this price tag, I think it's going to be an early finish. So I'm on the, the Temurov KO 1-2 um, combination, half a unit at plus 410. Something Something's off of these lines. Either that's going to look... Um, like insane value or or he might even lose the fight like this guy if he doesn't knock out Vergara like what does this fight look like so I'm gonna be looking at maybe live betting Vergara after the first maybe second round round and a half something like that to see where you know kind of where Temurov's at because if he's not finishing Vergara early like I feel like this line's just wrong so I'm taking Temurov give me first or second round knockout I think he's going to at the very least absolutely go for it that's what he does Next, we got Clayton Carpenter going against Lucas Hocha. I'm on the Carpenter money line, two units, minus 200. I think he can win this fight wherever it goes. On the feet, you know, Hocha has some power. Gasol is striking, but he's very hittable. I've seen him dropped in pretty much every single fight. And then on the mat, you know, takedown should come free here for Carpenter. Um, should be able to take down Hocha. Hocha makes a ton of mistakes on the ground as well. So I think Carpenter can win by any method. It could be knockout. It could be submission. It could also be by decision. So I just played the money line, two units, minus 200. Also looked at the inside of the distance potentially, but I'm fine with the money line there at minus 200. Next, we got Thema Garimbo going against Nico Price. Um, man, Themba's minus 410 at this point. I think it's a little bit wild. Um, but I was also looking at like Themba by by finish or Themba by knockout. They're just not the best prices at all. Uh, Themba has literally one one knockout in his career. It was against Pete Rodriguez. The other knockout he had, it was like a, like a TKO via ground and pound. I guess you can call that. An, so he has two, knock, yeah, two knockouts in his career. Um, Price, he's very chinny at this point. The durability is gone. So I guess, I guess he probably knocks him out, but I just need a better price tag on it. Themba has five submissions. Um... Yeah, I'm passing here. I'm passing on this one. But yeah, Themba by KO, I guess, is the pick. But this could get greasy. This could get greasy. Next, we got Daniel Rodriguez going against Alex Morono. A uh, big giant pass. I was going to bet Daniel Rodriguez uh, either the money line or by knockout if Alex Morono showed up looking like he didn't train for this fight. But Alex Morono actually showed up and looked in the best shape he has in a very long time. So yeah, this fight's honestly probably competitive if Morono is coming in here ready to go, which he does look like he is. So it's a pass for me. Uh, Chidi and Jaquani, Jared Gooden. I'm on the good and money line, uh, plus 150 for one unit. I think it would probably be a, a knockout win or uh, even a submission win for good, just inside the distance, but there's not much of a difference between the inside the distance or the money line for good. And so just took the money line there. My thinking here is, you know, Chidi, um, this guy's getting up there in age. He's 35, 36 years old. He's cutting way too much weight. I don't think he should be fighting at welterweight. And he's looked rough in there as of late. I know he's coming off of a win, but it was just the worst fight I've ever seen against Reese McKee. Um, you know, the volume isn't really there for Chidi. The striking's there, the, the power is there, but I fear as the fight goes on, Gooden can kind of take over. I feel like Gooden's much more durable. I feel like Gooden has more volume on the feet as well. And I feel like Gooden has um, just more heart in general. We've seen Chidi quit in so many fights. She's been finished eight times in his career. So when the going gets tough, Chidi looks for the door. And I think Gooden could potentially show it to him here. But I also want to be shocked at like a good indecision just based off the fact that we just saw Chidi lose a decision to Albert Duraev somehow not too long ago. So yeah, I like Gooden here on the money line. Maybe he does get knocked out in the first round, but I think he takes over as the fight goes on. Next, we got Grant Dawson going against uh, Rafa Garcia. Yeah, I'm on uh, the the fight doesn't go to decision here. One unit plus 190. And then I'm on Dawson round two, quarter unit plus 1,000. And then Dawson round three, quarter unit plus 1,500. Um, yeah, I like Dawson here to win the fight. 
I like Dawson here to finish the fight. The reason I took the fight doesn't go to the decision instead of the Dawson inside the distance is because there's not much of a difference. And Dawson, anytime he's lost the fight, it's by knockout. So it just kind of covers, you know, the, the potential Gar Garcia knockout, although I don't think it's too likely. But yeah, this fight doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I think, uh, you know, Garcia is pretty solid, but I just think Dawson's a level above wherever the fight goes, um, especially on the ground. Um, you know, Garcia is a good wrestler. Uh, Garcia is a good grappler. I just think Grant Dawson's a great wrestler and a great grappler. And I think um, the grappling, the control, the pace is going to get to Garcia here. And I think eventually he's going to get Garcia out of there in round two or round three. Dawson, two, three props. Just like Pierce, two, three props. They're always in play. They've came through many, many times. And I think they do here as well at big prices. Next, we got Jung Young Park going against Brad Tavares. Um, yeah, nothing here. I like Park to win this fight. Park to win this fight by decision, but it could be close. Park's been going out there and grappling a lot lately. I don't think that's on the table here against Tavares, who does have elite takedown defense. I just think Tavares is kind of done, kind of on his way out. He's been looking rough the last several years. So, yeah, give me Park here to win, but not much sticking out on this one. Uh, Tetsuro Tyra going against Brandon Roy Val. Again, not much sticking out on this fight either. I think Tyra wins this fight, but minus 300 I think is, you know, very wild to me. But, you know, I, at the same time, though, I could see why. It's like Roy Val, the worst takedown defense in the division. Uh, Tyra should be able to get takedowns here. And once he does get takedowns, like the control of Tyra is elite. So, yeah, I think uh, Tetsuro wins this fight. And yeah, could be by submission potentially. Um, Rival's not easy to submit whatsoever, but could also be by decision. I don't know. But yeah, I like Tyra to win. The price tag is just too too wide for my liking. If anything, it's probably a dog or pass for Rival. But at the same time, this dude has no takedown defense. Yeah, Tyra should win. Uh, yeah, so that's all I got for UFC Vegas 98. Quick recap here. Dawson. Uh, Garcia in a uh, fight doesn't go to decision one unit plus 190 Dawson round two quarter unit plus a thousand uh, round three quarter unit plus 1500 Jared Gooden on the money line one unit plus 150 um, Clayton Carpenter money line two units minus 200 Temurov KO one two half a unit plus 410 uh, Pierce Sabatini fight doesn't go two units plus 115 uh, Sabatini by sub half a unit plus 650 Cody Haddon, 2-3, sub, quarter unit on each, round two, uh, 3,100, and then round three, 3,300, and that is about it. So yeah, lots of spots sticking out. Best of luck, guys. UFC Vegas 98. I think it's going to be a fun card, a violent card. Enjoy the fights. We'll talk to you soon. See you later.